Today, we're going to look at the unit circle building on what we've already discussed about degrees and radians. And I have a warm up here for us converting um, some of our common angles from degrees to radians. And this is going to come in handy below where we fill out the complete unit circle. And before we move forward, guys, the unit circle is going to be a helpful reference sheet. So if you never print off the notes, this is the one notes that I recommend absolutely printed off, fill in with me. I'm going to highlight a lot of patterns and memorization tools for this, but more or less, this is going to be a big reference sheet that you can look at to help us find sine, cosine, tangent, degrees, radians, all kinds of things. You can see below all of the blanks that we're about to fill in, and there's so much information there. So print off these notes, fill them in with me. Um, and so this warm up here is going to come in handy below. So converting to radians, number one, 30 degrees. Remember to convert it to radians. We're going to multiply by pi over 180. And then in that process, I can divide and simplify those both by 30. And the it's going to simplify to pi over 6. So 30 degrees in radians is pi over 6. Number 2, 45. Change it to radians, multiply by pi over 180. Those can all be simplified by 45, leaving me with pi over 4. Number 3, 60 degrees, change it to radians, pi over 180. And those can be simplified by 60, giving us pi over 3. Number 4, change 120 into radians, multiply by pi over 180. Those can be simplified by 60. So I will get 2 pi over 3. Number 5, 135, multiply by pi over 180. And we can reduce those by 45, which gives us 3 pi over 4. And 150, change degrees to radians, multiply by pi over 180. Those can be simplified by 30. Give me 5 pi over 6. I know I went through those fairly quickly. You can double check on that. You can pause it. You can rewind it. But converting all of those common angles to radians will help us below and speed up our notes at the bottom. So the unit circle can be used to find trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent that might sound familiar from geometry for angles in standard form. The radius of the unit circle, so why we call it a unit circle, is its radius is one unit. It's based over one single unit um, in all directions. And therefore, any right triangle with a hypotenuse formed by this radius has a hypotenuse of one unit. We are not going to dive in too much into all of that, but I did want to explain to you why we're calling it the unit circle um, and that the radius is one unit. You have a brief image there of the one unit radius creating a angle. Hypotenuse would also be one sine and cosine and how all that works. Um, but we are going to focus on below. This bottom section is the most important. And we're going to fill in this unit circle with tons of information. You ready? Okay, so let's start filling this in. You can notice the innermost circle there has degree symbols. So let's label all the degrees of our circle starting with zero degrees. I'm going to go straight up to 90 all the way straight over 180 straight down is 270 and make a full circle add on there 360 degrees we've also been talking patterns a third of the way to 90 degrees would be 30 degrees add another 30 go another third of the way to make 60 and then if you added another 30 degrees would take you to 90 let's keep that pattern going if i go to the next third of the quarter, adding 30 degrees makes 120, adding another 30 degrees, 150, another 30 takes us to 180, add another 30, 210, another 30 degrees takes us to 240, 30 degrees would take us to 270, keep going, another 30 degrees, 300, another 30 degrees, 330, and then adding 30 would take us to 360. So there is all of our main um, degrees, 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, and then using a third of the way each third mark um, is 30 degrees. Halfway in a quadrant, halfway to 90 would be 45. So from 90 degrees, if I added 45 degrees, that would give me 135. 
I'm going to do the same thing down here in the third quadrant. I'm going to add 45 degrees to 180 to give me 225. And then the last one in the fourth quadrant, we're going to take 270, add 45 to it. It's going to give us 315. So the next set of blanks next to our degrees is for radians. So let's list all the radians. At the beginning of the notes, we converted several degrees to radians. That's going to be helpful for us. As I start at zero degrees, zero degrees is equal to zero radians. We also talked about in our notes recently that 180 degrees is equal to pi. So I'm going to go ahead and label that one pi radians. All the way around, 360 degrees is going to be equal to 2 pi. So let me come all the way back around and label the radians 2 pi. Now, what about 90 degrees? Well, from 0 to pi, if I want to go halfway between that, 90 degrees is going to be pi over 2 radians. What about 270? So I had zero, half, one whole, I need three halves. So three pi over two is the radian measurement for 270 degrees. Now on the beginning of the notes, we filled these in. We changed 30 degrees to pi over six, 45 degrees to pi over four, 60 degrees to pi over three, 120 to two pi over three, 135 degrees to 3 pi over 4, and 150 degrees to 5 pi over 6. So let's take a moment to look at patterns because this unit circle is all about patterns. First, let me label our quadrants. This is quadrant 1, this is quadrant 2, this is quadrant 3, and this is quadrant 4. Also, while I'm here, I'm going to mention in quadrant 1, our x and y values are positive, positive. In quadrant two, negative, positive. In quadrant three, negative, negative. And in quadrant four, our ordered pairs are always positive, negative. That'll come in handy in a moment. So looking in the first quadrant, we have 30 degrees was converted to pi over six. We have 45 degrees was converted to pi over four and 60 degrees converted to pi over three. Now there's some patterns here I want you to recognize because if you can memorize some facts about this first quadrant, you can fill in this whole circle with your radian values, okay? Notice 30 degrees was paired with pi over six while 60 degrees was paired with pi over three. Do you see how 30 is paired with six? 60 is paired with 3. Those are backwards. They're paired with their opposite radian denominator. So if you can memorize 30 degrees would be paired with pi over 6, 60 degrees is paired with pi over 3, you can have that memorized. Now 45 degrees, he is so special. I love him so much. Has his own thing going on and in fact most of his measurements are so easy to memorize. 45 degrees is paired with pi over 4. 45 degrees in radians is pi over 4. 45 starts with a 4. Very easy to memorize that one. Now take those patterns and look over to the other side. As I look at 120 degrees, what's its radian value? 2 pi over 3. Now wait, look. Do you see it's reflected? Pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3. The 60 degrees to 120, they have the same denominator of 3. The same is going to happen at that 45 degree mark in the second quadrant. That middle 135 degrees also has a denominator of 4. 3 pi over 4. And then 150 degrees kind of matches up with the 30 in that it also has a denominator of 6. Pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. How interesting is that? So I'm going to grab the highlighter and I'm going to mark some of those reflections. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight all the way across, but we did notice that these in purple, 30 degrees and 150, were common. We also saw the 45 degrees had something in common. And then lastly, 60 degrees, I'm going to go all the way down because we will continue to see patterns, was similar to 120 degrees. Now we filled in these radians at the top of our notes, but there are ways you can memorize this. Um, in the second quadrant, notice our radians were 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, and 5 pi over 6. Each numerator was one smaller, one number, one value smaller than the denominator. Do you see that? 
So in our second quadrant, I'm going to write a note that for radians, our numerator is one smaller than the denominator. I'm just going to write one less. That's going to make more sense here in a minute because we're going to fill in the rest of this unit circle based off these patterns. So let's start with the next quadrant, quadrant three, looking at radian values. Now I highlighted 110 degrees with a purple line matching up with 30 degrees. Let me tell you, its radian value is also got a denominator of six. At 225, its radian value also has a denominator of four. And at 240, that denominator radian value is three. I know, I know. Now, if you converted 210, two radians, you would get seven pi over six. If you convert 225, you'll get five pi over four, and 240 is equal to four pi over three. Now, how did I know that so quick? Because in the third quadrant, our radians, the numerator is one value bigger than the denominator. I'm gonna say one more. Our numerator is one more than the denominator, seven pi over six, five pi over four, four pi over three. In quadrant four, I'm gonna have five pi over three. I'm gonna have seven pi over four. And then the last one at 330 degrees is going to be 11 pi over six. Now, again, notice those denominators are matching up exactly the ones that we highlighted in blue um, with the denominators of three. In green highlighted, they all have radian values denominator four, and in purple they are highlighted, all have radian values um, denominator of six. Now in this quadrant, our radians, there's two ways you can memorize the numerator. Some students like to look across. So if I'm looking, at five pi over three. Looking across, some students like to take the two and three from two pi over three and add those two and three to make five as their numerator. And same moving on seven pi over four, add the three and four from 135, three plus four makes seven pi over four. So you can use that method. The way I like to think about it is if I doubled my denominator and took one less. So if my denominator is three, I double it and make six, take one less five. So that's how I memorize it. But you can use either method that you like. So I'm going to write it is double minus one. And you can memorize these however you like. There's tons of YouTube videos, guys, on how to memorize these. So you aren't computing the radian values every time. So let's look. We have filled in all the degrees of our circle, all the radians of our circle. You really just need to memorize the first quadrant and then the rest, the radian values in quadrant two, the numerator is one smaller. In quadrant three, the numerator is one larger than the denominator. And in the fourth quadrant, double that denominator, but subtract one, make sure numerator. Little memorization devices, or you can always multiply by pi over 180 to convert it to radians. Let's keep moving out of our circle here. I'm looking at zero degrees. We have these lovely parentheses for ordered pairs all the way around our circle. This is going to represent cosine and sine values all the way around our circle. So I'm going to go and label up here on our ordered pairs cosine and sine, cosine and sine, cosine and sine, and then quadrant four, cosine and sine. So those are going to match, okay? So if I'm at zero degrees, if I'm on the unit circle we mentioned, it is one one unit radius. So if I'm literally on the coordinate plane, ordered pair over here is going to be one, zero, right? One value on the X, zero on the Y. Go straight up to 90 degrees, that's gonna be zero, one. 180 is gonna be negative one, zero. And then at 270 degrees, that is zero, negative one. So there is our four main places at zero degrees, 90, 180, and 270. Just think about, um, uh, working on the coordinate plane. Now let's look at our first quadrant, the 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Now, if you can memorize these, the rest is golden. So our cosine and sine values for these guys all have denominators of two, all of them. So I go ahead and fill that in. And then I start at 60 degrees and I'm going to count down one, two, 
three and back up one, two, three. And then all the numerators have square roots. Now, I'm not gonna take a square root of one, but I can take a square root of two, square root of three, not gonna take a square root of one, square root of two, square root of three. So they all have square roots. I didn't take a square root of one because the square root of one is one. Doesn't change it, okay? So put little square roots on all of the numerators there and you're done. There is your cosine and sine values. And then we can just reflect it over to the second quadrant. So notice our blue line, reflect that over. So at 120 degrees, you have 120 square root of three over two. I'm gonna reflect the green line, square root of two over two, square root of two over two, and reflect that purple line, square root of three over two and one over two. Now we are in the second quadrant where our cosine value should be negative and sine value should be positive. So I'm gonna go back in here and put negatives on all of those cos cosine values, the first ones, the cosine values. I'm gonna go down to quadrant three and keep the pattern going. So um, following my purple line, I should have square root of three over two, one over two. Green at those 45 degree angles, square root of two over two, square root of two over two. And then the blue line reflects to one half and square root of three over two. Now we're in the third quadrant. All of them are negative. All of them, cosine and sine are all negative. Everybody should have a negative sign. And I'm gonna keep the pattern going in quadrant four, following that blue line. We should have a one over two, square root of three over two. At that 45 degree mark, square root of two over two, square root of two over two. And at 330 degrees, we're gonna have three, square root of three over two, one over two. Now in the fourth quadrant, cosine should be positive, sine should be negative. So I'm gonna put negatives on all of those second values, my sine values. Wow, you did it. You filled it all in with your cosine and sine values. So what does this mean, Ms. Brian? Why did we just fill this in? Well, you're gonna have questions that ask for the cosine value of 135 degrees. So I said at the beginning of the notes, this is a reference sheet. So you'll be able to go to 135 on this paper and look for your cosine value, which is the first one in those ordered pairs, negative two, negative square root of two over two, cosine value of 135 degrees. So this is a reference sheet. Again, in our ordered pairs are cosine and then sine. Cosine starts with C, sine starts with S, they're alphabetical, cosine and then sine. We have one more blank that is gonna be for our tangent values. Now tangent is pretty easy to memorize, so I got you. Tangent is going to be zero at zero degrees. Up to 90 degrees, it's undefined. At 180 degrees, tangent is zero again. And down at 270, tangent is undefined again. So ways you can memorize that is it's the same as slope. If you have horizontal slope, it's zero. So I think about the zero degrees and 180 degrees, zero. And if I have a vertical line, its slope is undefined. And so when I'm up at 90 degrees or at 270, undefined tangents there. Let's fill in the first quadrant with our tangent values. Um, you just have to memorize these. Like I said, if you can memorize the first quadrant, we can just make patterns to fill in the rest. So for 30 degrees, tangent is square root of three over three. At 45 degrees, tangent is one. And at 60 degrees, tangent is square root of three. So ways I memorize this is at 30 degrees, I've got square root of three over three. It pairs with pi over six. So, um, when I have a radian of pi over six, I need those two threes. 45 degrees always has the best numbers. They're always so easy to memorize. So a one at 45 degrees. Anytime I see a 45 degrees pi over four, I know I'm golden. 60 degrees, it pairs with square root of three. It's radian value um, pi over three. So just see different ways you can memorize that. Let's move around the circle now. So in quadrant one, tangent is positive. I'm gonna label that. Over in quadrant two, tangent is going to be negative. In quadrant three, tangent is positive. And in quadrant four, tangent is negative. So ways you can memorize that, if I drew a giant letter N 
the diagonal of the capital letter N shows me which quadrants are negative. So let's go to quadrant two and label our tangent values. They still are reflecting. So since we're in quadrant two, they are negative square root of three, negative one, and negative square root of three over three. In quadrant three, tangent's positive. So I'll have square root of three over three, positive one, and positive square root of three. And then our last quadrant, four, we've got a negative square root of three, negative one, negative square root of three over three. So now it is complete. Guys, we will talk about all of the different ways that we can memorize this unit circle. I will continue to emphasize if you can memorize the first quadrant, then you just build and make patterns out of the rest. Our first quadrant, once we have it memorized, second quadrant, cosine and sine values, those numerators are one less. In the third quadrant, they are one more. And in the fourth quadrant, they are double minus one numerators of those denominators. You can always still take your degree values and convert them to radians by multiplying by pi over 180 and simplifying. Um, and then tangent, again, if you just memorize the first quadrant, it just kind of reflects. And then we follow those positive and negative rules. Guys, write that down, print that off. Um, save a screenshot. You're going to need this. Again, it's a major reference sheet over our next couple of lessons. So thanks for filling it out and I'll see y'all in class.